Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to be setting up our nav mesh and our AI navigation for our project. Because since we are using units that we aren't directly controlling uh, with an input, so we're not really telling them to move left, right, or whatever. Instead, we are telling our units to move to a specific location. And if there is an obstacle in the way, such as a box or a big rock, we want our units to move around it rather than trying to go directly through the center. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, let's go ahead and just add in some obstacles. So I'm just going to go up to here where we can add in some objects and I'm going to add in, let's just say a cube. Okay. We can bring that down like so, maybe increase it in scale a bit. And I am just going to move a cube here, duplicate it with control D and just place, oops, just place a couple of them down here. Uh, just so we have an understanding of what this nav mesh does. Okay. So we have our cubes placed down. Now, let's just say we have a unit that is behind this one right here, and we want it to move on the other side. Now, typically, when you'd move a blueprint or move a character, you just basically tell it to move in the direction that you want it to. Yet, we can't do that because there is an obstacle in the way right here. And we have to create what's known as a nav mesh, which is basically um, a, an asset that determines all of the walkable space in our level. So how do we do that? Well... Let's go up to this little uh, drop down here where we can create objects. And actually instead, we're not gonna go here. We are gonna open up the place actors menu or the place actors panel. And if you don't have that, you can just go window, place actors right here. Now in place actors, what we want to do is we want to look for nav. And you should see here that we have ourselves a nav mesh bounds volume. And we want to drag that into our project here, okay? Now you'll see that this is sort of like a cube, but without the visual. And this is because the nav mesh bounds volume basically defines an area of which it will generate a nav mesh for. So what we need to do is go to our details panel. I'm gonna set the location to be zero on the X, zero on the Y, zero on the Z. So you can see it's pretty much in the center of our world right here. And we need to basically increase the size of this uh, selected box here. So to do that, we can scroll down in the details panel and we want to go down to the brush settings, okay? And you see here, we have the X, Y, and Z values. Basically, we just want to, when I increase these, we can basically change how big this is going to be, okay? So just make sure that um, the bounds of this box here fit our level because only the objects within this um, selected boundary are going to be uh, calculated for a nav mesh. Now we've got that here, but how do we know what's working? Well, what you can do is press the P key on your keyboard and you should see now that we have the walkable ground selected. Okay. So you can see here around our cubes, we have this sort of like a gap, like it's been cut out. And that basically means that our cubes are defined as non-walkable. If something wants to walk through a cube, it is going to calculate a path going around it. Okay. So basically, Whenever we want to move from one spot to another, it is only going to be moving on this sort of selected green plane here. So great. That is how we can set up a nav mesh bounds volume. Now in the next lesson, we are going to be looking at creating a unit which can actually utilize this and move from one spot to another um, using AI. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all then in the next lesson.